Hello friends, today I am going to talk about recursion and recursive methods in C-Sharp. Here we will learn what recursion and recursive methods are, how to use recursive methods in C-Sharp program and how they differ from regular method. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Ok without any further delay, let's get started. Recursion and recursive methods in C-sharp. What is recursion? Recursion is nothing but a concept that the method calls itself. When I say method calls itself, what does it mean is inside a method we call again the same method. So when method calls itself, there is some point where this method calling should get stopped. Right? Otherwise, it will be run endlessly. So for this, we will have to provide some condition. When it gets satisfied, recursive method would get terminated. Okay, let's try to understand it with the help of examples shown over here. So here there is an example where we want to write a program. In that program, we are just going to print first n natural number using recursion. Let's say first n natural number and if we provided n is equal to 5, then output should be shown like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. Okay. For that what I have done, I have written one recursive method. So this is the recursive method, a static int print number, int starting value, int counter. So basically this method is going to return the int data type and it is just going to accept two input parameters. First one is the starting value and the second one is the counter. Okay. First what I am doing over here, I am just checking whether this counter is less than one, then I am just returning this starting value. Okay. Otherwise, if it is counter is not less than 1, then what we are doing? We are just decrementing by 1 and that's what I have written counter minus minus. Then what I am doing? I am just printing the starting value into the console window. Then finally, I am just returning this method itself. What I am passing into this method? Starting value plus 1 and the counter value. What we have got it decremented over here, right? So this a statement is just going to call again the same method print number, right? So that is basically is getting called recursively. Recursively in the sense from the method inside the method itself, it is just going to get called and it will get called until this counter is less than 1. And that's what we would be able to get this output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here what I have done, I have just written one main method which is an entry point of this application. So here I am just console dot write how many numbers to print. So we are just going to get input from the users from the console window itself. How we are going to capture those numbers, whatever the user has input. So for that, what I have done, I have just reading this console dot read line. So it will get the number, it, it is just going to get converted into the int, and then it is just going to store into this variable counter, which is of the int data type. Then I am just going to call the recursive method with two parameters. First parameter I am just passing as a starting value as a 1 and the counter what we got it from this console window right when we are reading this console.write line and this number is entered by the user because we just asked user how many numbers to print. So he just entered some number and that number is nothing but the counter. That's what we are passing into this print number method right. So it is just going to get called this one and this it will execute until counter is less than 1. But suppose if user has entered number 5, how many numbers to print as a 5, how many numbers to print and they have entered 5. So it is just going to print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because it is just going to get decremented by 1. So unless and until it is just less than equal to 1 counter value, then it will be executed. Once this condition gets met, then it is just going to return the final starting value. Okay. And if you see this output, output got printed how many numbers to print and user has entered 5. So this recursive method got called 5 times. Okay. And then it is just printed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 value. We will see all these things in action in Visual Studio. Okay. So here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of the recursion demo where I am just going to print the first n natural number. Okay. So for this, what I have done? I have created one console application recursion demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, there is a class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. Here, what I am doing, I am just writing this statement into this console window. Recursion demo, print the first and natural. Then what I am doing, I am just going to write how many numbers to print. Okay. So 
I'm just asking users in the console window itself how many numbers you want to print it. That's number I'm just going to capture using this console.readline statement. And then I'm just converting into the int and then storing into the counter variable of the int data. Okay. Finally, I'm just going to call this recursive method when with two parameters. The first parameter is nothing but the one and the second is the counter and counter the value that we have received from the user only, right? how many numbers to print they have just put something number and that number i'm just going to capture into this counter variable of in data type that's what i'm just passing into this recursive method print number. let me show you what is the print number method is okay so this is the our print number method that is going to accept two input parameters a starting value and the second is the input parameter as a counter right and this is the print number that is basically returning into the in data type. so here if you see i'm just passed print number one and counter so starting value is one right and the counter counter we are going to get it captured when the user is going to enter into this console window and that i'm storing into the counter value right so those value i'm just going to pass into this print number then in this print number method what i'm doing i'm just checking counter is less than one if it is true then i'm just returning the starting value if it is false, then what I am doing, I am just decrementing by one the counter value. That's what I have written counter minus one. Then finally, what I am doing, I am just printing into this console window, console dot write line and this starting value, right? And then I am just going to call again this print number in the return statement, where I am just passing this starting value plus one as a first input parameter and the counter value. Now the counter value is the decremented by one because I have written counter minus one. So it will be calling this method itself. This method is going to get called unless and until this counter is less than one. Okay, so let me execute this program and show you output. So before that, I just want to uh, put the breakpoint over here. I'm just putting breakpoint here. Also, I'm just putting the breakpoint over here. Also. I'm just going to put the breakpoint in print number where I'm just calling this recursive method with two parameters. Okay, so let me show you how this method is just going to execute it. Okay, so if you see the first two line got printed, the recursive demo print the first and natural number, right? So this number got printed and also how many numbers to print. So it is just waiting for the user to enter the value. So let me put the five. Okay, I have put the five and I'm just clicking the enter. So once I click enter, the control came over here, the print number. And this is the counter value we have stored into this variable as a five because I have read what is the user enter the value using the console.readline statement converting into the int32 and then I'm storing into the counter. Now if you see the counter value is a 5. So here what I'm passing the first parameter is a 1 and the second parameter the counter which is nothing but having the value as a 5 right. So this is going to call this method. This is the recursive function recursive method it is just going to get called. Let me put this continue button up. Once I click this control came over here and if you see this starting value is 1 and the counter value is 5. Okay, so let me go and debug it. So I am just going to click this a step over. Okay, so it is just going to check. It is checking whether the counter is less than 1 or not. So right now I have passed the counter value as 5. So it is not going to get satisfied this if condition. It is a false, right? So it will come outside and then decrement the value, right? So let me uh, go and See, if you see here, now what is the counter value? Counter value is now 4 because I have used this decrement operator, counter minus minus. So now counter value is 4, right? Now what I am going to do, I am just going to print this statement. So the starting value, whatever the value that I have passed, 1, it is just going to get print. Then I am just going to call this print method again. And now our first parameter is a starting value plus 1. So what was the starting value? It is 1, 1 plus 1, 2. And then counter value, I have decremented one. So it will be four, right? So this is the four value. So let me go and go and then click again. So it just called this method and came the line number 21, right? So now if you check a starting value is two and counter value is four, right? Now let me execute again. Here also the counter value is right now four, which is not less than one, right? So this condition is going to get false, right? So it just come out, then it will decrement the counter value. Now the counter value is 3. And then a starting value, what was that? 2. The result going to print the starting value as a 2 into the console window. 
and then it is just going to call this print number method again now the starting value is 2 and plus 1 3 first parameter value will be 3 and the counter value now is 3 both are 3 let me go and execute one more time if you check here a starting value is 3 counter value is 3 and again if it is just going to check whether the counter is less than 1 or not it's not because right now the counter value is 3 and 3 is not less than 1 it, so it's false so it is just going to come out of the if block then it came and it's just going to get decrement the counter value by one now the counter minus minus we have written so now what is the counter value it's two so and a starting value was three so three is just going to get printed right and again i'm just going to call this print number method again and what is the input parameter for the first parameter what is the input for this what is the first input parameter a starting value plus one that is the three plus one four so what is the counter value it's two right so let me go and execute one more time here if you see the starting value four counter value is two now if i go and check again if condition what is the counter value is two and it is not not less than one so with this condition again it is just going to get four right then what i am doing i am just going to execute one more time then it is just going to get decremented by one by the counter value so counter value is one then what i'm doing i'm just printing into the starting value so it got printed as a four now again i'm just calling this print number method what is the first input parameter a starting value plus one that is the five what is the counter value it's one right so i'm just going to call so here a starting value came as five and counter value is one now again i'm just going to check the if condition if counter is less than one false because counter is one here also one this condition is false because one is not less than one right is equal so this condition is false then again what i'm doing i'm just going to decrement counter by one so now my counter value is zero right so this statement a string a starting value got printed into this console window five value got printed into this console window and then i'm finally i'm just calling this print number method what is the value as a first input parameter i'm going to pass a starting value 5 plus 1 6 and what is the counter value is 0 right so now i'm just going to call again here a starting value is 6 and counter value is 0 now if condition here counter is 0 which is less than 1 that is true now it is just going to get enter into this a block right so it just go and enter this then it is just going to return the starting value what is the starting value is 6 right it is not going to get print anything it just came outside right once it came outside so this statement got printed how many numbers to print 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 got print so that's how this recursive method works it is just going to get called by itself and that's what it's what this value got printed 1 2 3 4 5 why use recursion in c -sharp? Recursion is especially useful when solving problems that can be broken down into a smaller repetitive problem. Okay, let's try to understand with the help of examples shown over here. Let's say if you want to search a file in the file system, it can be easily done by recursion. Right? So if you see this file system, there we have root folder. Root folder has two branches, directories and file system, and it has different folders, right? Dev, bin, APC, LIB, etc. So what happens in recursion is the program could start at the root folder and then search through all the folders and files in that one after that program would enter each folder and search through each folder inside of that one and that way we are going to identify the exact file right so recursion works really great for this type of a structure because we can search multiple branching paths without having to include many different checks and condition for every possibility that's where this recursion is going to help us tremendously. Other examples of recursions are tree traversal, merge sort, and searching a file system. When not to use recursion in C-Sharp? Recursion seems like a simple solution to all our algorithmic needs. But that should not be the case as there is a catch. What is the catch? Catch is, as a developer, we need to think two main factors when we opt for any algorithm, time complexity and space complexity. Ideally, both should be as low as possible. What is time complexity? Time complexity represents the computational complexity of an algorithm. 
that is how many operation it needs to be performed in a scenario whereas a space complexity of an algorithm represents how much space it takes in memory with respect to the input size in general recursive algorithm usually have higher space complexity. here a new function call is added to the stack every time we call the function for a small program this may be negligible amount of memory but when program and input data gets bigger the large call stack can have potentially huge impact so we need to consider these two factors on mind whenever we are going to consider whether we need to go ahead with this recursion or not whether it is going to take much time complexity or a space complexity so as a developer we need to think these two factors in mind whenever we are going to consider this recursion right ideally these both should be low as possible right but for the small program that is okay we can go ahead and use this recursive function considering these two factors in mind we can decide whether we need to use recursion or not based on the context now that brings me to end of my session to sum up in this video we learned what recursion and recursive methods are and also we talked about why to use recursion and finally we discussed when not to use recursion in c sharp so now we understood that recursion makes our project cleaner and more efficient when used in the correct context that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video